Hi. Today we are going to discuss the last portion of module five. In this video, you can see the transducers and LVDT. This is a part of module five of ME three one two metrology and instrumentation. I am Dadeshin, Tokyo Institute of Science and Technology, Kochi. Objectives of this videos: ability to understanding the definition, functions, and categories of transducers, the class and types, and examples of transducers. application for transducers this is the main objective of this video basically transducer is are defined as it's a device which converts energy or any information from one form to another these are widely used in measurement work because not all quantities that need to be measured can be displayed as easily as others if you for example if you want to measure the temperature you cannot measure at high temperature with a temperature measuring instrument so we are using a transducer similarly a better measurement of a quantity can easily be made if the parameter or the measure n may be converted to some other form or another form which is more convenient or accurately displayed that is we are using transducer that is so for example temperature can be converted into resistance then finally the resistance that will be indicated by a pointer or a digital instrument that will be comparable with the temperature again so that once the temperature measure, measuring instrument is converted to some other signals then finally that, that signal is reproduced back to measurement scale that that is how we can measure the temperature this the transducer is a device which provides useful output in response to the specific input measured which may be physical or mechanical quantity property or condition transducers may be mechanical type electrical magnetic optical chemical acoustic thermal nuclear or combination of any two or more of this the transducer is a device which transforms a non electrical physical quantity that is temperature sound light whatever it may be pressure into electrical signals delta is in the voltage current capacity resistance etc transducer is any device that converts energy in one form to another majority either convert an electric energy to mechanical displacement or convert some non electrical physical quantities such as temperature sound or light into an electric signal this is what we are uh, got it from the previous slide also this is what is happening that is input we are giving input or any signal transducer converts to output energy or signal see when you make some sound this the figure depicts that when you make a sound then the transducer 
that sound uh, sound travels to uh, the transducer and transducer takes sound as its input signal and transducer converts into an electric signal then some electronic process is happening and it is transmitted as electromagnetic waves this is one type of conversion again this and uh, this is what is happening in radio station tv stations etc then when our devices like a tv or a radio they are receiving this electromagnetic waves that is received and corresponding processing is happening and they are producing some kind of electronic signal that signal again convert back to the sound signal like sound signal and it is converted signal that electric signal is converted to sound signal of the original input this is what is happening so there are transducers their job is to convert one form of energy into another form so functions this uh, they to sense the presence magnitude change in and frequency of some measurement after that to provide electrical output when appropriately processed and applied to read out device and gives accurate quantitative data about the measurement measurement we have seen in the previous classes measurement means anything that we want to measure any parameter which one which you want to measure is called Uh, measure and suppose temperature pressure strain length angle whatever it may be that is called measure and see the structure of transducer is there will be input there will be a sensor and an output this is the structure of a transducer important parameters that is one is static response for anything it is a measuring device that is why it has static and dynamic responses that we have seen in the first uh, video of this module that is static characteristics and dynamic characteristics then in static characteristics you know that um, accuracy precision repeatability race producibility etc so many per calibration etc so many parameters dynamics mean response time measuring lag time response uh, so many things are there that is time varying type then environmental factors how this factors are affecting the transformer performance that means temperature atmospheric pressure the sound the etc reliability is another factor that is called M- it is expressed in mtbf that is mean time between failures mean time between failures or mtbf that refers to the the time that elapses between one failure and the next that is the expected uh, time between one failure and the next failure that is what is called mean time between failures static and dynamic characteristics of transducer is given and detailed uh, are available with my video in the f- uh, first first video that is detailed so here i am only Uh, giving the names of the static characteristics of the transducers that is accuracy precision sensitivity linearity repeatability reproducibility resolution threshold drift stability tolerance range and span etc so details are there in the previous video dynamic characteristics that is change with rapidly with time that is it is called dynamic characteristics that is speed of response measuring lag fidelity dynamic error etc now we see the classification of transducers classification is based on one is active and passive transducer second is analog and digital primary and secondary then on the basis of 
transduction form then transducer and inverse transfer transducer type first is active and passive what is active transducer active transducers are those which do not require any power source for their operation they are active they work on the energy conversion principle they produce an electric signal proportion to the input for example thermocouple thermocouple is such an active trans- we need not having any type of external battery or something we need we need not connect it for the for its activation but passive transducers are which require external power source for their operation they produce an output signal in the form of some variation in resistance capacitance or any other electric parameter which then has to be converted to an equivalent current or voltage signal this is called passive transducers for example photocell ldr is a passive transducer because it will vary the resistance of the cell when the light falls on it this change in resistance is converted proportional to the signal with the help of a bridge circuit so we need we 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 need a bridge circuit where the battery or something is to be added so this that is why we are giving the external power for the activation of this transducer hence a photocell can be used to measure the intensity of light then analog and digital classification on this basis of output actually if it is a continuous function of time then it is called analog suppose if it is a discrete steps the output is in discrete steps this is called digital and that is called discrete also it is called pulses in the form of pulses classification of transducers again it is primary and secondary whenever a parameter is to be measured sometimes there may be a requirement of two stage transducer not always first stage is primary and second stage is secondary i'll take an ex- example of pressure measurement usually we are using pressure gauges that pressure gauge is mainly made with borden tube pressure gauge so when the pressure of the fluid it is exerted on the borden its uh, cross section or is there will be a, some expansion will be there in the borden then at the end of free end of the borden there will be we suppose we are connecting a lvdt what will happen is according to the movement of the borden the lvdt will the core of the this lvdt will move and that movement will produce output voltage which is proportional to the displacement of the free end so here borden tube is the primary one which senses the pressure and lvdt is connected to the free end of the borden other end of the borden tube which will sense and it will convert the it into a displacement at free end it is converted on a and then in the linkage everything will be there then it will give some signals that signals in terms of that we can measure the pressure on the digital output or a uh, display unit so lvdt act is acting as a secondary transducer so like that primary and secondary can be there that is primary and secondary transducer then on the basis of transduction form used depending on how they convert the input quantity into resistance inductance or capacitance respectively that is uh, based on that we can con- we can classify as it is uh, piezo electric thermoelectric that is thermal is the input and the output will be electric magnetostrictive uh, 
then electrokinetic and optical transducers how they are you convert the input quantity into other forms and based on that we can we can have many uh, transducers transducer and inverse transducer that is a uh, transducer means which converts non electrical quantity into electrical quantity and inverse transducer what happens is it will converts an electric quantity into a non electric quantity that is inverse that is uh, in uh, input the photo resistors photo trans uh, transistors thermistor microphone piezoelectric sensors then photosensitivity means its output will be led piezoelectric buzzer then speakers microphone you can see that when we are talking on a microphone then it converts our sound into an electric signal but on the loud speaker the speaker receives this electric signal and converts it to sound so it is converted into a sound again so it is a inverse uh, transducer other type of also available that is based on the quantity to be measured suppose if we are using a transducer for temperature measurement then it is called temperature transducer that is an example for it is thermocouple thermistor etc pressure transducer there are a lot of pressure transducer there diaphragm type is also available displacement transducer the movement that is a linear movement uh, can be measured with the help of this displacement transducer that is what is called lvdt linear variable differential transformer that we will see later then flow transducers that is also used in uh, flow measurement some transducers which converts the flow into a signal from that signal it is converted back and we know the uh, flow characteristics then type of transducers based on principle of operation some uh, transducer working on photovoltaic because solar cell some is working on piezoelectric then some transducer working with chemical then some is mutual induction electromagnetic then hall effect that means the production of potential difference across an electric conductor when a magnetic field is applied in a direction perpendicular to that of the flow of current similarly photoconductors that is based on the light application is very important for lv uh, this transducer that is electromagnetic applications antenna that converts propagating electromagnetic waves to and from conducted electric signals it converts to electric magnetic waves and that is uh, transmission area it is converted into electric electromagnetic waves receiving area it is the reverse is happening that is why it is called electromagnetic then magnetic catalysts converts relative physical motion to and from electric signals tape head disc head and right heads converts magnetic fields on a magnetic medium to and to and from the electric signals then hall effect sensors that is converts a magnetic field into a electric signal then electrochemical so application of transducer is in electrochemical areas ph probes which makes some electrical signals are giving and chemical effect is uh, the output then electro galvanic uh, uh, fuel cells then electromechanical output devices are called actuators that is we are using in uh, uh, electro uh, pneumatic uh, actuators actually pneumatic and electro pneumatic actuators piston cylinder uh, valve mechanism we can many are we are giving some signal electric signal plc via plc we are giving electric signals that signal actuates the mechanical device like piston cylinder etc so this is a electro mechanical type accelerometer it is used for measuring the acceleration it is also one type of a transducer we are using similarly the lvdt linear variable differential transformers or rotary variable differential transformers similarly load cells 
that uh, that uh, that is commonly used in vegi machine electronic vegi machines that we can see in the shops every every well. because the force we are giving and it converts some electric signal then it output is uh, uh, processed and it is giving out as a digital readout in weight so load cells potentiometer when used for measuring position we are using the, this kind of um, transducers then radio acoustic that the radio receivers converts electromagnetic transmission to electric signals radio transmitters converts electrical into <coughs> then electro acoustic acoustic means related sound that is loud speakers earphones that converts electric signal into sound signals then magnetic field motion air pressure microphones microphones means the mic that we are using that is it converts the sound into electric signal then electro optical is there photoelectric it is also called sometimes photoelectric is also that fluorescent lamps it converts electric power into incoherent light actually then it comes white light it's called inco incoherent light then incandescent bulbs electric signal we are giving and it is giving some kind of light as an output then leds it converts electrical into electrostatic then electrometers then thermoelectric thermoelectric is very important that is rtd we are using is thermoelectric that converts temperature into electric resistance or signal this is very important for measuring the high temperature measurements suppose the oven in the industry they are suppose in a steel industry the melting temperature is nearly 2000 degree centigrade in that time when you are going to measure we are using the rtds which will converts the temperature into a, a electric uh, resistance thermocouples thermocouples that also uh, work with the seebeck effect uh, that is uh, two dissimilar metals are joined this a active type uh, thermocouple it is also uh, converts the relative temperature of two metallic junctions to electric voltage so it is conversion of uh, temperature into electric signal electric parameter thermistor two types are positive and negative type are there that is at spdc then negative temperature coefficient that is ntc ptc means it is proportional to the uh, temperature then ntc means when the temperature is increased the resistance will decrease that type of thermistor is also there that is ntc type then radio acoustics radio receivers the radio transmitters can read and understand then grigor counter which is used in nuclear industry that is the radiation levels using a transducer called grigor muller tube so it is used in nuclear industry especially microphone and speaker microphone convert sound pressure waves into electric current and the speaker convert electric current back into sound pressure waves and also many other applications also there the strain gauge that is one, one the, the strain gauge means the strain gauge is a very thin type of strain gauge that is bonded with the material whose strain or stress is to be measured while we apply some force then it will elongate the elongation with the material the strain gauge also will elongate having some kind of uh, changing length that is called strain that strain when it is come the strain comes means then it will convert an electric it will produce an electric signal and the change in the resistance which is equivalent to the change in the stress is measured with the help of a bridge circuit this is what is happening in strain gauge this is lvdt that is uh, the important application of the um, transducer is lvdt it is used for a displacement measurement it is a common type of electromechanical transducer that can convert the rectilinear motion of an object to which it is coupled mechanically into a corresponding electric signal 
that is the giving we are giving input as a displacement but output will be a corresponding electric signal that is why it is converting the displacement is a measure and it is converts into electrics that is why it is called a transducer lvdt is also a transducer and in lvdt linear position sensors are readily available and it can measure the movement as small as a few million of an inch up to several inches that is small variation in the displacement also produce some kind of electric signal so this linear measurement in micro level that is not visible actually but micro level movement of the core that is lvdt probe that will create or produce output as a electric signal that is why it is called it is very very used that is small movement is can also have an output signal similarly we can measure up to several inches see up to 30 inches we can measure that is 0.762 meter we can measure the type of lvdt is also available lvdt you can see the construction features inside there is a core and you can see three portions that uh, uh, color that the red color part the middle part is called primary windings and uh, to the side of left and right of primary we can see the secondary windings so all these things are encapsulated in a shell not to uh, Uh, save this unit from stray waves then magnetic issues etc then it is a high permeability magnetic steel its body high density glass filled polymer coil form is the uh, this uh, coils are like that then uh, th- some threaded hole is there in in uh, at the center of the core there will be a hole that is a threaded hole from which the mechanical assembly can be fitted so that the when it whenever there is a displacement corresponding since it is threaded when there is a movement means the core will move in the transformer's internal structure consists of a primary winding which is centered between a pair of identically wound secondary windings you can see that middle primary left and right of this uh, primary is the secondary that is it is called symmetrically spaced about the primary primary is at the center then symmetrically the secondary windings are wound the coils are wound on a one piece hollow form of thermally stable glass uh, that is reinforced polymer and encapsulated against moisture and wrapped in a high permeability magnetic shield and then secured in a cylindrical stainless steel housing so when we see from outside these things we cannot see the internal uh, arrangements we cannot see but internally we can see all these things primary coil secondary coil there is a coil which has at the center there is a threaded form a threaded hole is also there this coil assembly is usually the stationary element of the position sensor this is a cross sectional view of uh, lvdt so you can see the central core then the middle uh, windings are primary left and right is uh, secondary coils see what happens see they they can be uh, three extreme points one is the middle you can see the core is exactly at the center so the emf from both secondary will be nullify and it will be zero value suppose the core is moving to the extreme left maximum left maximum left means e1 will be more that is even means leftmost uh, a secondary windings will have an output signal so that will be dominating one then e2 so the uh, net output will be e1 minus e2 at the same time if the core is towards the left of the uh, 
towards the right of the primary maximum right or extreme right then the secondary coil on the right side will have the dominating then so emf from the, it will be more that is why its emf is e2 and the resultant output will be e2 minus e1 and this explanation is given in the in this slide that is working when an ac excitation voltage is applied to the primary winding a voltage is induced in each secondary winding through magnetic core that is transformer principle is like that only when the core is in the center voltage from each secondary coil is equal and also 180 degree out of phase that results no signal because it will be cancel out as the coil travels to the left of the center the primary coil is more coupled to the left secondary coil and creating an output signal in phase with the excitation coil hence it will be e1 minus e2 output as the coil travels to the right of the center the primary coil is tightly coupled with the right secondary coil creating an output signal 180 degree out of phase with the excitation voltage that means e2 will be more that is right side is voltage will be more so e2 minus e1 will be the output then you can see the advantages of lvt lvdt lvdt is very cheap so low cost low cost equipment but we can measure variety of measurements it is solid and robust capable of working in wide variety of environments similarly there is no friction resistance because the core is moving no contact point is there not making any contact with the part core does not make contact with the transformer hence long life high signal to noise ratio so noise ratio high signal to noise ratio means noise will be very less when compared to signal so the undesired signals will not be there low output impedance total resistance that is impedance will be low then hysteresis loss when we are going towards left to right and right to left to and from moment the error will be less that is negligible hysteresis hysteresis we have seen in static characteristics part then no damage to lvdt suppose the range is say which is specified range will be there suppose if we exceed the range nothing will happen to the lvdt then low power consumption and at the same time it has some limitations that some measurements we should make a contact with the measuring surface but in L lvdt it is not possible lvdt that contact with the machine surface not possible some measurements we should take with the in, in contact with the measuring surface such type of measurements we cannot use lvdt performance is affected by vibrations suppose if there is any vibration then the lvd the, the core will move start moving if it is micro level movement then also there will be an output signal but it is due to the vibration it is a, actually it is a noise actually so this is an unwanted thing so vibration is there means it will affect the measurement and the performance not suitable for fast dynamic measurements because because this core is having some kind of mass and it will have an inertia so fast response uh, measurements it is not suitable because the moment of the core it has on mass and there is thereby an inertia also then low power output it's another disadvantage then very sensitive to stray magnetic fields but shielding is not possible that is why we'll get an unwanted uh, signals as an output application of lvdt apart from displacement we see 
the displacement measurement we are using LVDT. It can also be used for uh, as extensometer that we are using in uh, extensometer we are using in strength of materials laboratory where the uh, tensile testing is done. The elongation uh, well we you are giving for the uh, load loading conditions. The material is loaded and the tensile stress is applied. So what is the extension? Where we can use extent as extensometer. Then it can also be used as temperature transducers. Then butterfly valve controls. Servo valve displacement sensing. You can use LVDT. So the measurement of deflection of beams. Beam will have some deflections. Suppose if you are keeping LVDT, how much is deflected? We can see. Then strings, then load cells, then force transducers because everywhere this uh, some kind of displacement is happening. Applying force means there is some displacement. So there we can use the LVDT as a sensing element. Then pressure transducer that we have already seen in uh, direct and in uh, primary and secondary transducers. This LVDT can be used as uh, for pressure measurement. Measurement of thickness variation of workplaces. Uh, suppose if you want to measure the, uh, so LVDT we can use, so, suppose there is a uh, thickness variation means, wherever the thickness variation is there, there will be some displacement. So uh, from that we can calculate the thickness variation of the work pieces. Then profile measurements and sorting the products by size. That is, uh, some industries they are using the LVDT for. LVDT is always contacting with the component. Suppose that uh, suppose components coming with the same dimensions and thickness, it will have it will show some signal. So the operator can know that is the same size. Suppose if it is less, means the LVDT will displace more and the output signal will be changed. Uh, so it is a. Uh, uh, beyond its level, then the operator knows that that component is out of dimension. So he can sort the products by size. Similarly, fluid level measurements in hydraulic cylinder. So fluid level, because when the fluid level decreases to some level, we cannot operate the hydraulic machines. Similarly, when it is filled, there will be a level. So there will be a displace. So it will displace. The fluid level will contact with the um, LVDT, and LVDT will give the signals. Like that, we can control the fluid level in hydraulic cylinders. So that's all, that is uh, transducers, type of transducers, then LVDT, its working principle, then its uh, application, uh, advantages, limitations, etc. Then this will be, a, I think it is a good, uh, it, it, it will help for your studies for the Module 5. Thank you, thank you for listening, thank you.